Welcome to Jackie's Craft Table. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Jackie Pasco from Jackie's Craft Table. I'm an artist and card crafter, and I'm super excited to be a part of Arteza's Art Camp. Art has always been a big part of my life. I love all art mediums. The last several years, I've gotten into card crafting because I love sending little works of art out into the mail to brighten someone's day. To create my card today, I'm going to be using Arteza's half pan set of 36 watercolors. There's a really nice selection of colors in this set. They're bright and vibrant colors. When I watercolor, I really love to use 100% cotton paper. This pad is bound on one edge and it is 140 pounds, so it's a nice heavy duty weight. To draw out my images, I'm using their 33 piece drawing set. I love this set because it comes with a wide range of hard and soft pencils. You also get lots of different erasers, a pencil sharpener. It's just a very well thought out set. Let me lift up the top tray so you can see even more pencils below. And I really love their 4B pencil. It's a nice soft pencil. And as you can see there, it's very well used. So to draw out my images, I use their watercolor books. This is a nice hardback book. You get two in the set. So I like to practice drawing out my images in this book before I draw them onto my expert 100% cotton watercolor paper. One side of the page is a little more textured and it's smooth on the flip side. I'm going to be drawing some California poppies for this card I'm creating. I do use stamped images on a lot of my cards, but sometimes I just want to do my own thing and draw out my own images. So let's get into the card project. Most of my cards, I use a standard A2 sized card, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. And that's the size I'm going to be using today. I cut up a piece of Arteza watercolor paper, and it's a little bit bigger than the standard A2 sized card just because I need room to put my painter's tape around the edges. This blue tape is a very low tech tape, so it won't rip my paper when I pull it off. Taping it down like this just helps it dry flat. I wet down my paper first so that there's a nice sheen on it. And now I can start adding my color. I'm just going to be using one color and this is Prussian blue, such a gorgeous color. This is a clipboard that I taped my paper to. The clip part of it helps to raise it up on a slight angle. This just helps my watercolors move down the paper. I'm going for a gradient look, so I want my darkest color at the top and then eventually fade out into a very pale blue. I put down lots of layers on this paper and this cotton paper sure takes a lot of water. It's just lovely. Right now I'm just trying to get as much dark color as I can at the top of this paper. This is just a fun process to do. I love playing with watercolors. The paper is going to bow up a little bit, but that's normal. Once it's dry, it will flatten down. At the top of this paper, I'm not using much water with the color. It just comes straight from the pan with very little water. And then as I progress downward, I add water to it to lighten it up. I'm going to use my heat tool to dry it really quickly and then I'm going to start in on my second layer. You can of course let it air dry but I was just a bit impatient. I wanted to keep on painting. So this is a happy summer card I'm creating today and so I want this background to represent a bold summer blue sky. Watercolors of course will lighten up as they dry but that's just normal for watercolors. And that's why I'm adding lots of layers. I'm sopping up the water on the edges. It's where it pulls up a little bit. I'm being very careful not to get the paper towel into my paint. However, if you wanted to create a cloudy look, you could crumple up a tissue and just dab it across your panel. It, it creates a beautiful sky. And here is even my third layer. I'll speed this up a little bit for the sake of time, but you can see how dark it's getting at the top of this paper. And here it is all done. It's still very wet. This time I just allowed it to air dry. 
and now I can peel up the low tack tape. The paint seeped under the tape, but that's all right. I'm planning on cutting down this panel. I'm going to use a wonky stitched rectangle die to cut down this panel. And this just puts a lot of cute embossed detailed lines around it. It's going to be a little bit smaller than my A2 sized card, but I liked some of the white of the card base to mat my work. I'll run this through my die cut machine. I'm putting some more tape just around the edges so it doesn't shift when I run it through my machine. And I'm making sure to put the tape at the edges so I don't pull up any of the paint on my card panel. You could, of course, just cut this panel out with your paper trimmer, but I like to use these faux stitched dies. They add a lot of fun interest to your cards. And here it is, all done. I just love how this turned out. I used a piece of tracing paper to copy the images out of my book. And now I'm going to transfer them onto my piece of 100% cotton paper. Arteza does have graphite transfer paper, but I didn't have any of that on hand. So I'm going to show you a little trick. So I flipped my tracing paper over and I'm just scribbling over my lines. I'm using the edge of the pencil to quickly do this. You can just go over the lines too if you want, but this is just a fast way to do it. Also using a softer lead pencil is going to be more effective than one of the harder lead pencils. And now I can just flip it over and tape it down to my watercolor paper. I'm going to be cutting these out, so I don't care about placement. I just want to leave enough room between each image so that I have room to cut them out. When I cut them out, I like to leave a little bit of a white border around my images. And now I can trace over my images and the images will transfer onto this watercolor paper. I'm not pressing down very hard because I don't want to score the paper or press into it too hard. I'll skip ahead here a little bit. And now you can just see the soft lines on my watercolor paper. They're just dark enough so that I can see them. Now I'm going to trace over my lines with a black waterproof pen. And make sure it is waterproof or you're going to smear all your lines when you start in on your painting. I'm going to speed this up here in just a second. It takes me a while to trace over these lines because I'm going pretty slow. I like to use a really thin nib on my pen. I believe this is a 0 0.1, but you can, of course, use a thicker pen if you'd like. I like to start out thin, and then I can add thickness to the line weight as I go along if I want. And then when I'm done with all of my tracing, I come in with my kneaded eraser and erase all of the lead that's left over. And now I can start in on the painting. This set has a really nice selection of greens. Mostly I'm going to use fern green and cobalt green for this image. And I'm mostly just taking the colors straight from the pan. I'm not doing any mixing. You can mix the colors on the paper, and that's what I do here a little bit. If you're new to watercoloring, starting out with floral images is a great place to start. You don't have to draw them perfectly because they're not perfect in nature and you can make them as whimsical as you want. To color in the petals, I'm using the whole range of orange and yellow colors from this palette. And I'm just putting a wash down first. And then I can start building up my layers. I'm putting my darkest colors or my shadows where the petals meet. But this first layer is just a wash to get color onto my flowers. I'm allowing the green to bleed into the bottom of the flowers. And I'm doing that just by touching it to the orange. Where the stem meets the flower petal, the petal seems to have a tinge of green to it. And now I can come in with some darker colors and darker shadows. And this is such a fun process, just watching the watercolors move and blend together. And I'm just going back and forth between my three images. I think it's really fun to watch the progression in fast motion like this. 
Poppies are one of my favorite flowers, and I've done red poppies in the past, but I've never painted these pretty orange California poppies before. I understand they bloom in spring and summertime, so I thought this would be the perfect flower for a summer-themed card. I didn't tape my paper down this time, just because I am going to be fussy cutting these out. And then I am going to be taping these down onto the front of my card, so that will keep them pretty flat. I keep glazing layers onto my work, and you can add as many layers or as few as you'd like. Arteza also recently came out with a beautiful set of metallic watercolors, and those are really fun to play with to add a little bit of sparkle to your images. You could even mix them with your regular watercolors, and I wish I had thought of that for this painting. And now I can stamp out my sentiment. I'm using my stamp positioner. This will allow me to re-stamp it if I need to. And I'm going to do a little bit of heat embossing. I use an anti-static powder first. This will prevent the white embossing powder from sticking to where I don't want it to be. I'm inking up my sentiment with some embossing ink. And I like to do this step twice. This is a nice sticky ink that will hold the white embossing powder in place. Now I can take it out of my stamp positioner and I'm just using a piece of type paper to pour the white embossing powder over. And then I can just gently tap off the excess. I'm using my heat tool again to melt the white embossing powder. I allow my heat tool to warm up for a minute before I bring it to the paper. Now I can just wipe off the anti-static powder with a tissue. And now to put this card together, I'm going to put a lot of dot liner behind my watercolor panel. This will help it to lay perfectly flat on my white card base. I really like the white border around my blue panel, and it really helps to make the white sentiment pop. I have the Big Mama roll of Arteza foam tape, and I just love this stuff. I'm adding dimension to my card by popping my images up off the card panel just a little bit. I want a pretty full coverage of tape behind my images so that when I send them out into the mail, they won't sag down in places. I'm even going to cut a piece of tape into a thin strip so that I can add it to the stem of my main image. I use this tape a lot probably on most of my cards that I create, and this roll has lasted me for months and months. This stuff is very sticky, so once you adhere it to your card, it's not going to be moving. And now I can attach this behind the stem of my main flower. I put my leftover pieces on the side of this roll, and then I can use them for another card project. This foam tape is also fabulous for making shaker cards. I'm using a little bit of liquid glue to adhere my leaf image down flat onto the card. I'm putting this down first. As you can see, I left a little bit of a white border around my edges. You could cut right up to the line, of course, if you wanted to. And next, I'll adhere the flower bud. I'm going to use a little bit of liquid glue on this stem and just glue it down flat. And then I'm going to just tuck it behind some of the leaves on this image. And now I can adhere my main flower. I'll just peel off the release paper. And I'm going to adhere the stem right over the other two. I do come in with a little bit of twine later on. I just felt like the card needed a little something more. I tie a little bow around the stem of my main flower. Next, I'm going to adhere a few gemstones. These are just three different sizes of clear gems. I'm using a little dot of liquid glue to adhere these down, as well as my jewel picker to pick these up. This just adds a fun little bling to your card projects. For another finishing touch, I'm coming in with a white gel pen to add little pops of highlights around my flowers. And then this card is ready to send out into the mail. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope that you were inspired, and I hope you're having lots of fun with Arteza's Art Camp.
And a big thanks to Arteza for asking me to be a part of this. I've had so much fun. Here's a close-up look at my completed card. The bow adds a really cute touch. I really love Arteza's line of art products. I'm constantly using them to create my greeting cards, as well as my other art projects. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye.